Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another Archive 5 video. This one is the Poetry Edition. So basically, Archive 5 is when I take some old unreleased videos, jam them all together, and see what we come up with. So in this one, we have five different things. I'll put the timestamps on the screen and in the description if you just want to skip to them. So the first three are all actual poetry videos that I created. So the first is an hour of work in one minute, which is a time lapse of me writing with a poem set to it. We have From the Mouth of a Cat, which features Biggie, my cat, and it is one of my poems set to some music. And we have Anonymous's White Mask of Freedom, which is another one of my poems. These are all my spoken word things. And then after that, we have a little clip of Spoken Word Night here in High Wycombe, which is an event that I run. And then at the end of the video, I am taking the Poetry Challenge, which is kind of a book tag, but also kind of not really, in which I take a book and try and write a poem out of it. So, with that intro out of the way, I'm going to leave you with some of this older footage. Don't just think I'm just fobbing you off with older footage, though. I just... You know, uh, I publish one video a day and apparently make what more than one video a day to share with you guys, so... This is... yeah. It's the hard, 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 and the grind, 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 and the time you find to sign your life away. And I promise to be honest when I'm tired and melancholic, and I'd rather be in demand than empty-handed. I just can't understand how I bowed to their demands and landed so badly underground and when you're around I'm surrounded by sound and proud of it. It's the evening wind and the morning worry and you're always in a hurry like the cowards and the bullies who scurried like rats from a sinking ship. And you gotta think of hips and lips and flip the switch quick, bitch, before a deep sleep sends you reeling into fleeting dreams of evil. I will fight you, puny human. You're just a giant rat in a baseball cap. Stroke me, stroke me now, stroke me now before I growl and howl your tiny house down. Do you call that a garden? Mrs. Jones down the road grows roses and she feeds me fishies when I'm feeling greedy, which is almost all of the time. I don't have time for your whining. I sleep all night and I sleep all day and I try to escape when you're away from me. Milk, bring me milk, bring me milk from the schools of a thousand virgins. Hold the door, Hodor, you've got to let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Meow. Meow. Regulators of the internet, you have been warned. We will not bow down to pressure or stand idly by while you bully our ISPs into submission. Stunting the organic growth of the greatest repository of knowledge the world has ever seen. Tim Berners-Lee has every right to be angry. His great invention destroyed by government entities like Alan Turing's poisoned apple, depriving our anarchic world of the greatest minds of a generation. Mahandas Gandhi marching to war armed with DDoS attacks and security breaches. Loopholes in the code which lie in wait on darknet servers, proxied and clouded with the secrecy where guns and drugs change hands on the open market. That is not our problem. We are righteous folk who live in peace and stylize the new world order with motion graphics and virtual realities. We write our wills on word processors and 10 Downing Street claims to have the right to see them. But this is not 1984 and I am alive to show for it. So tell that to your kings and queens in their ivory thrones and ruined palaces. Information is the currency of love. 
Bits and bobs and petabytes whizzing through underwater pipes Panhandling along as they transmit wirelessly encircling the badlands which fight to halt its progress The greatest invention the world has ever seen and they want to tear it apart and put it back together again You feel unsafe in the knowledge of men with false agendas Who sign edicts and ruin buildings to decide the world's future and I don't trust them Give me pens and paper and semen distilled in invisible ink Sacred texts that don't shake the world but which reveal your inner secrets Stirrings for girls at open mic nights and the way your friends touch your arm and look different every day and still beautiful Anonymous is why Mask of Freedom is a flag for the faithful to rally around One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter and the auditors are neither They are the living conscience of the net which protects its best interests sometimes breaking the law in the process our leaders do not lead us into greatness They cripple our lines of communication and riddle us with misinformation And I trust our hive mind more than anyone, man, you see First there was IRC which enabled specialist interest groups to form around a subject of your choice Then came MSN, Windows Live, BBM and the rise of Bebo and MySpace So far so good And then the web hit its terrible teams and we signed up on mass to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Pinterest, Whatsapp And now our fragmented entities are just stressed out lies lived in public Mass hallucinations and delirium pulling us together and pushing us apart Say no to censorship. Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm taking you along with me to my monthly spoken word night. So this is all footage from the November spoken word night because December was cancelled due to snow. We don't have a huge crowd, we have maybe a dozen to twenty odd people who come, a bunch of regulars who come along most months. It's every second Sunday at the Rose and Crown here in High Wycombe, 7.30pm. I'll pop some info in the box below. There doesn't need to be war. We are related to it all. King George is our mutual cousin. Alex is also one of the dozen. Now you're welcome to do any kind of spoken word and you can use your own work or somebody else's. Here are just a few of our regulars to give you a feel for the kind of stuff we usually see. Once read by the diseased. Once read by the now deceased. Books once read by the greasy fingered scoffers, once read by the pissed and the shitted, who didn't wash their hands or scrub their cubicles. In my life, by Jello, the dessert known here in the UK is jelly. How many were immigrants? Where were they from? How many soldiers have died since then? One hundred years of war and men. Never learning, we vote and we listen to plump politicians like magicians who will empty your coffers and fill your news with causes to fill a soldier's shoes. Wickham evenings where the rebellion is not on the streets. It flows from the taps of pubs and art centres and social clubs and for those who rarely venture out the theatre. Hi folks, Dane here and today I am doing the poetry challenge. It's a bit like a tag, but not quite. Okay, so this was created by David from Lit Journal, who David no longer makes videos, unfortunately, but his, his videos are great, and actually, if you go and check out his channel and check out some of those old videos, he puts a really unique spin on his approach to booktube, and I think that's super cool. And this is a challenge that he created. There's a process you go through to do it, I'm going to give this a go and then at the end I'm going to tag some people, specifically people who are poets as well. Whether or not they do this, I have no idea. It's uh, more a way of giving some YouTube poets some exposure I suppose. But yeah, in the meantime I'm going to follow the steps for this tag and I'm going to create a poem. I should mention before we get started actually, I've done this in the past as well. Here's old me doing my last poetry challenge poem. She seized his wrist, could feel him nervously when her anxiety made no sound. Could handle the hunting, making her twisted and hardly hard. Gobblers turned to the bristling lid, and Lyra had replaced the jump at other ground. Be at the lurking door a little more. He proved them likely, became of glee from playing out of sight. She sensed they were below. He turned, for what with that right, he had had having, though more than retiring. Alright, so without further ado, let's make this new one. So, step one is to pick a book that you love. Now, in the last one, I used my favourite book, which is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. But I can't use that again because 
I'll get the same bank of words if that makes sense. It will all become clear to you as you see the next steps. And this is all in the description below if you want to give this a go yourself. I encourage you to, whether you're a booktuber, a writer, or whatever. So instead of using Northern Lights, I've decided for, uh, to go for a different book that I love, and I have gone for The Stand by Stephen King, because this is a beast. So there's got to be a poem in this. Step two, write down these five numbers, the date, month, and last two digits of the year of your birthday the first two digits of your phone number, and the last two digits of your phone number. All right. Step number three, turn to those pages in your book. I can't actually do all of those at once. This is gonna merge with step four. Step four, read out the first line of each page. The first line of page 11. This is a waste really, because my highest number is page 89, and this is like 1100 pages long. <laughs> all right, page 11, that's the first page. <laughs> Well, I've got page six here, so how's that gonna work? Oh no, there are, it does, it goes before that because there's an introductory essay, all right. So the first line of page 11, Hapscombe's Texaco sat on number 93, just north of Arnett, a pissant four street burg about 110 miles from Houston. How in the hell am I gonna write a poem with this? Okay, so next up, page six. Again, first line. The idea of putting anything else into the other suitcase was ridiculous. Page number 89. I'm gonna cheat slightly because the first word of this sentence is on the previous page, but the alternative is this really long sentence that's just gonna take forever. So for this one, page 89, Ed Norris groaned and told her to give the kids some aspirin. Page 78. The first line of this is, what in God's name could that one be? And then the last one, she had no idea if Dr. Spock recommended this sort of treatment or not because she had never read him. Okay, so step five, write a poem that describes you using only those words. You don't have to use every word, but you cannot use any other words and you can't use a word more than once unless it shows up more than once. So this is presumably gonna be some sort of montage supercut. Okay, well, as expected, my camera cut out while I was working on that. However, I have come up with something and I used all of the words once. So I squeezed them all in. It doesn't have a title yet, but whatever. Here is my poem. Are you ready? Right. Bear in mind, this is meant to be autobiographical as well, but it's really hard to do that. I did my best. This is a dramatic reading, by the way. You can tell that I am a poet. The idea was to read anything ridiculous. Hapscombe's Four Street Burg recommended on a Texaco suitcase, putting God's treatment just north of Houston. Never no idea if Van Dov B or not because she had him. Annette Norris, a pissant kid doctor, told Ed she had some aspirin. Spot groaned, this sort of name could give one other. What else sat in number 110, about 93 miles from? trails out. You can put the last word there. You get to decide what the last word is. All right, that was harder than I remembered it being, but it was also fun. So yay. So now I'm going to tag three people to do this and you don't have to film yourself doing the process, but I think you should actually go out and try and write a poem like this. Follow this set of instructions and see what you come up with. And if it works well and you're happy with it, post that on YouTube. And if you're a booktuber, feel free to do this. If you're a writer, feel free to do this. If you're a poet, feel free to do this. And if I tag you and you don't want to do this, don't do this. And if I don't tag you and you do want to do, do this, do do this. Anyway, so the three poets I'm going to tag and I recommend you check out their channels are Vino Venitas, David Persaud, and Wesley Nash. So there you have it, that was the poetry challenge. That took me a lot longer to film than I thought it was going to, but it was fun. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment to let me know what you think of my brand new masterpiece. And if you do give this a go, then let me know. I'd like to check out your videos and I will see you soon in another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye.